All right, good evening, CPS, uh, families and community. Uh, let me first start by saying I'm just incredibly, uh, I apologize uh, for those technical difficulties. Uh, we did run several tests uh, yesterday and today, and when it, came, when it came time to go, we weren't quite there. So I apologize, thanks for hopping over here. Uh, via Zoom, we'll make sure that we can meet you where you are at next time on Facebook. Uh, I know that that's where a majority of our families and community are at. So uh, thanks for joining us, and, and I hope you're excited to learn about our Return to Learn plan and how we plan to uh, get students and staff back to school safely uh, in the fall. So just a little bit uh, about tonight's format. Um, I'm going to start just by presenting our plan and all of the work that uh, has gone into this. Uh, it's been a very, uh, you'll see throughout the presentation, it's been a collective effort, and we're excited to share our work with you up to this point. Uh, we will do a Q&A at the end. Uh, we'll, we'll afford about 10 to 15 minutes at the end to answer your questions live. Uh, you should have access to the Q&A or the chat uh, in, our, in our Zoom webinar today. So please go ahead and just ask your question there. We're documenting and recording those. And please know uh, that we won't be able to get to all of them uh, tonight. And so uh, we'll be sure that we get a, an FAQ posted on our website in both English and Spanish. As we dive in uh, tonight, I think it's uh, really important that we just all get grounded on what COVID-19 has, how it has impacted us. So um, you've heard us use the words and, and you've heard it throughout uh, the news, the media, um, all over that these are certainly unprecedented times. That uh, while we have great plans in place now, uh, we had to react back in March. And so again, we're excited to share those plans with you. But we also understand that this can be a very confusing time for our kids um, with school ending on March 19th, uh, but yet an excitement to come back. And then lastly, as we work through our plan tonight, uh, I just hope that we can all remember and uh, be empathetic that this is a very emotional topic. Um, there are people who are joining us tonight uh, who maybe haven't been impacted at all by COVID-19, uh, but then we also have people who are joining us tonight uh, who have been severely impacted all the way from maybe how it's impacted your daily life to a job loss or possibly even death. It's also important that we, that we think about the, the seriousness of this and all of the, the beliefs and the uh, outlines that we're bringing, the frameworks that we're bringing to the table as individuals. Uh, when we look at the spectrum, uh, some of us believe that this is a very serious threat to the public's health. While on the other end of that, there, there are some of us that are still skeptical. Is this even real? Is it, is it really having that big of an impact? So again, tonight, as we work through our plan, please know that uh, we've worked with a lot of different agencies and individuals to try to come up with the very best plan for Crete Public Schools, and most importantly, uh, the safety of your students and our staff. So here's our plan. Let me first kick it off by saying that it is our goal that we will start school in person for all students on August 12th. Now, please remember that August 12th is a new day for us. That is actually the transition grades day. So on August 12th, all students who are entering a new building or those transition grades uh, will be in school and only they will be in school that day. So those will be kindergarten, third grade, sixth grade, and ninth grade. On August 13th, all of our students will come back to school in person with our staff. We did a survey uh, of our staff. We wanted to make sure that our staff were comfortable coming back to work. And as you can see, we had 96 responses, uh, which is a great response rate. And almost 90% of our staff said, you know what, we are comfortable coming back to work. Uh, I'll tell you the overwhelming feeling from our staff is we're excited to see kids. We miss our students, we miss seeing them every day. And we want to do whatever we can to get them back safely to school. We also sent out a parent survey and we had about a little over 430 responses to that parent survey. And as I, as I compiled the results, one of the questions that was asked on that survey is, will your students, do you plan for your students to attend in person if we have restrictions? And that survey came back at 90% of you who completed that survey said, yes, we want our students to be in school, in person with their teachers, even if there are restrictions. Again, this has been a collaborative effort. This is uh, a lot of people coming together, again, to, to learn together and ultimately put the best plan in place for our students. 
we're fortunate here in Cree Public Schools. We belong to the Greater Nebraska Schools Association, where we get to meet regularly with uh, the top 25 largest districts in, in the state. We also have a great educational service unit uh, that has reached out and, and really helped us plan and think through uh, how we're going to best deliver education to our students in person safely. But I'm also really, really proud of the fact that those school districts that you've seen there, we've worked really closely together. So if you look at our plans, uh, you'll see some commonalities, but again, it's about Creek Public Schools and what have we done to make sure that it is a safe return for all kids to Creek Public Schools. We've also done a lot of research. We've, we've visited with several organizations. We're seeing what other states are doing. And as you look at this, uh, this graphic here, you can see we've reached out to everybody from the CDC to different states. Um, again, just learning as much as we can so that we can put the best plan in place. I think it's also important that we acknowledge that we, we still have some restrictions and some guidelines that we must follow. Alleycap is our insurance provider. And I know that's difficult to see on your screen, but one of the things that we're ultimately responsible for is risk management across the district. And what that says is proper risk management would suggest that schools follow public health guidelines in protecting ourselves, our students, as well as making sure we're implementing uh, the proper cleaning and disinfecting practices uh, across our buildings. Also, the NSAA has, has put out guidance around uh, just making sure we all understand that the catastrophic insurance they provide doesn't cover anything COVID related. So we have to make sure again, that we have the best practices in place uh, to keep students and staff safe. We've also reached out to the medical um, community. And in particular, we were interested in what are our local physicians saying right here in the state of Nebraska. So as you look at all of those Nebraska-based and those Nebraska chapters of national organizations, all of them have provided letters of support that say we support the medical aspects of your plan. Again, we want to make sure that our students and staff are safe as we plan our reopening for August 12th and 13th. We've also had a great team in place. Uh, we've had a core planning team that, that has been meeting uh, very regularly. Um, and we're always coming back to the table to help each other problem solve. So as we get feedback from different groups or we get feedback uh, from parents and all of, the, all of the emails that are coming in and just different avenues of information, we're always coming back to the table to sort through it, again, to make sure that we have the best plan. We also have, you'll hear me use the word tenants. We have 12 tenants in our plan, and each of those tenants had its own individual planning team. Again, we wanted to make sure that we had the experts at the table, our teachers, our custodians, our kitchen staff, our medical community, our administrators. We wanted to make sure that we had it all covered so our plan was thorough yet flexible. And then we also had several extended teams out there working. We know um, we had teacher teams working behind the scenes on planning curriculum and unpacking standards to make sure um, that, that we know exactly what we're going to be teaching when we return. We also had um, information out there from our staff survey, our parent survey. We, we, we sent a survey out for our substitutes, just again, to get a feeling of, are they comfortable coming back to work as well? And then last week, we met with about 50 parents who provided tremendous feedback um, on our plan. And as we go through that tonight, those parents that were a part of that, uh, I truly believe that you'll see your input uh, has had an impact on our plan. We've worked extremely close with Public Health Solutions, um, our, our public health department right here in Saline County. Public Health Solutions will be implementing a risk dial in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, perhaps you've seen a risk dial in counties around uh, probably the most notable is Lancaster County. Public Health Solutions will be implementing the same style of risk dial, so with four colors, green, yellow, orange, and red. And so we've tailored and designed our return to learn plan around those same four colors. And if you look at the chart there, um, what I really like about our plan is that if you look down the green, yellow, and orange, we're really talking about all students. Uh, we want to make sure that Again, we believe that school is a great place for our kids. Our teachers are ready to see them. We just want to do it in the safest way possible. Red, um, when we get to that red or that severe um, risk of community spread, that's when we would move back into that full remote or e-learning. 
Again, Public Health Solutions has been a great partner with us through all of this. This is a snapshot of the dashboard that we will be seeing right here in Saline County uh, in the near future. So again, if you look at that middle column all the way at the bottom, uh, that will be the risk dial that we will use to help guide our decision making. I think it's also really important to know that as a, as a community, uh, of course, we support Public Health Solutions. Like I've mentioned, it's, we've, it's been a great partnership. Um, but I wanna make it clear that just because we decide to, or Public Health Solutions decides to move the risk dial, that does not automatically mean that Creek Public Schools is going to move their risk dial. We're going to use that as an indicator to start our conversations, to reevaluate our practices, and make sure that, again, we're providing the safest environment possible for all of our uh, stakeholders. Again, it's been a great partnership and that will continue to be a collaborative conversation. This plan is also kind of developed around uh, what I'll call the Swiss cheese method, that if we layer certain precautions and protocols and practices on top of each other, we are going to have the safest environment possible. We have tremendous control over what happens in our building from how students enter and exit uh, all the way to our cleaning practices. Uh, and so we, again, we believe as we layer these precautions on place, students can return to school safely and just importantly, we'll be able to keep our buildings open and keep kids there throughout the school year. All right, I wanna take a, a quick dive here into our 12 tenants um, just to um, give you the high level overview. I also want you to know, and, and I'll mention this at the end of the presentation as well, that all of the information in our Return to Learn plan, all of the details will be available on our website. Just look for that COVID-19 tab and we will get those out there uh, as soon as possible. So let's talk about academics. Most importantly, uh, we, we understand that, that kids need that social, emotional, um, su those supports, but we're also a learning organization. And so when we think about academics, our academic tenant team uh, has gone to great work uh, and great lengths to make sure that we are prepared uh, for high quality instruction upon our return. So some of the things that have guided our thinking, um, regardless of what color we are in, green, yellow, or orange, we have to be ready for extended absenteeism, meaning that if a student or a, a staff member were to test positive, that we could have absenteeisms from anywhere from 10 to 14 days, even longer. And so we wanna be prepared for that. So we, we're operating around the idea that it's inevitable, it's immediate, and, it's going, and those absences are going to be ongoing, and we are prepared for that. Uh, what we're helping teachers do, and they do a great job of this already, is we need to make sure that everything we're doing, every lesson we're preparing, uh, is planned to address the needs of both those in-person learners, as well as those extended absentee learners. Uh, and again, if we do that, then we know that we have all of our tiers, our green, yellow, and orange covered. We also heard from parents that we need to make sure we're streamlined in the platforms that we're using. Our teachers are awesome at finding great strategies for kids, but when it comes to e-learning, uh, less may be more. So we know that a majority of our students are gonna operate in Google Classroom if we are in that e-learning environment, Seesaw, and we're going to use Zoom, just like tonight, uh, to provide that face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. Also, uh, we've been, uh, this week already, we've started with some high-quality professional training for our teachers, again, to make sure that they are prepared as we come back uh, for, for our new normal here at Creek Public Schools. Our cleaning and facility modifications, uh, we are closely following the CDC uh, cleaning recommendations. We have awesome tools like electrostatic, electrostatic sanitize, sanitizing guns that we're using to sanitize all of those high frequency touch points. If we know those places are high frequency touch points, uh, we're doing everything that we can, adding plexiglass barriers in our offices, uh, again, just to make sure that, that we are staying safe. We're looking at ways to adjust our HVAC controls that we can make sure that there's this increased flow of fresh air. And then we have strict protocols in place if there is a positive test in a building so that we can make sure that it is clean and sanitized in a timely manner so that we can get all students back in that classroom as quickly as possible. We've received tremendous feedback around the idea of communications. I wish tonight would have gone a little smoother. We said 630 and again, I apologize for that. But one thing that we've heard from the community, our parents, our teachers, is that you want ongoing and consistent communication. 
And so here's how we're planning to do that moving forward. And it's going to start this week. So on Fridays, moving forward, the community and our staff can expect an update from me. That update might cover things related to our COVID plan, but it might also cover other district initiatives and issues that are happening. Um, if it doesn't directly impact a decision that we need from you uh, within 24 or 48 hours, just know that that information is coming on Fridays from me. We're also exploring different ways that we can make sure we can connect with all audiences. So we'll make sure that we post that information on our website. We'll make sure that there's a short video included. And I'm even going to dive into the world of podcasting so that you can get that information the way that works best for you. From that, our building principals will take that information and tailor it so that you get the specific details for your students building uh, each week. As we, as we transition uh, into that opening, we're going to make sure that our tiered status is published on each school website. So if we're in green, we're going to make sure that you know we're in green and you're going to know exactly where to go on that COVID website uh, to make sure that it's there. Again, we're also exploring new ways uh, to connect with you. So about the time school starts, um, sometime between August 1 and August 15th, uh, we're going to launch our new school website. Uh, we've received a lot of feedback about um, the, the design of our current website. Perhaps it's not the easiest to find information. We took all of that to heart and we believe we have a great new uh, design and website for you. Right after that, uh, you're gonna be able to go to your app store on your phone, uh, the, the Google Play Store or um, the Apple Store and download our district app. Uh, again, another way for you to connect with us and engage and an, another great, great way for us to share information with you. And again, we'll continue to use things like videos and podcasts and surveys, and we're gonna perfect this town hall thing so that we can engage more frequently. Our crisis team has, uh, we have a crisis team that's in place all year round, and they've met to make sure that uh, in the unfortunate circumstances that we, we may have a student or staff death that we're prepared uh, in light of our COVID situation. So really, uh, two, two opportunities to operate here. If our campuses are open, uh, we have those procedures in place. If we happen to be in all e-learning because we're in red, uh, we have great uh, procedures and practices in place uh, to provide supports for students, families, and our staff. Again, in those, uh, uh, hopefully not having to deal with those unfortunate uh, circumstances like a student, staff, student or staff, staff death. Our extracurricular activities team has been hard at work and we've been fortunate at the high school level. Uh, we were able to open up our weight room and our gyms to get our, our high school athletes in there. And that's really allowed us to practice those, those quality cleaning uh, practices and procedures again to keep students and staff safe. So we have a great plan there. Uh, we're also really working hard on how do we best teach those uh, good hygiene practices uh, for all students and staff again throughout the day but also when I'm going to practice and after practice and if I'm in the gym or in the weight room. Uh, we have a great physical distancing plan in place when possible. Uh, again we're looking at what does that look like in terms of conditioning and practice and at competitions. What does screening look like for our student athletes in terms of temperature and monitoring those COVID symptoms? Again we understand that if we're allowed to continue with our NSAA activities which it looks like we are right now uh, we want to we want to keep them going, and so we want to make sure that we're safe. You'll be able to see in all of the details how we plan for event capacity and parameters around virtual attendance uh, if we move from green to yellow to orange and red. Uh, we've also taken into consideration those instrumental and those vocal music concerts. When can we have those concerts like we traditionally have? When would we have to move to a virtual environment and stream those uh, on our YouTube channel and on Facebook Live? Our food service team, hard at work. We know that there's a lot of high touch points here and a lot of things to think through in terms of physical distancing. So we've, we've thought about everything from our food serving processes. So for example, if we're in, if we're in green, we still want students to have a, a lot of options, uh, but we understand that not every kid can be touching the tongs to serve their food. And so we're gonna have people, uh, our food service staff to do that for them. And that's gonna help us reduce those high multi-touch areas. Again. What does our sanitizing practices look like as we enter uh, the cafeteria? 
what can we do for physical distancing? Can we sit every other seat? Can we keep some distance between kids? And that's made us think about what does our table setup look like? Is there areas that we can expand our lunchroom uh, table setup so that we can get, uh, we can spread out kids and not just have them confined in the cafeteria? Also, does that mean we have to have an increased number of lunch rotations? What does that whole lunch line look like? And most importantly, that whole food security piece. So as we, again, as we move from green to yellow to orange, uh, those, those practices ramp up, again, from a lot of choice in green um, to prepackaged, pre-plated trays uh, if we get to orange. And I also wanna make it clear, if you hear us say prepackaged food, that doesn't mean that we're just going to, the, going to the store and buying it off the shelf. That's our awesome food service team preparing that food and then individually packaging it right here on site uh, for students. Of course, if we were going to move to that, that red, uh, we would, if allowed by the USDA, to move back to our community food service, just like we're doing right now. Not directly related to the student return, uh, but just so you're aware, we've thought a lot about uh, our human resources piece. Uh, we greatly value what all of our staff does for our students, and so we want to make sure that they are comfortable coming back to work, and if we can make any modifications uh, to, to increase their comfort, um, we're going to do that. So if you look on the left side there, uh, there are processes that we go through. If staff have reached out to us and said, man, I want to come back and see kids, but I have a couple questions or I'm nervous about this, uh, we're working through that with individual teachers as they reach out to us. The other thing that we've heard uh, came back loud and clear um, from the parent feedback was, if we have to move into that extended closure, what are, what are those expectations for our staff? How are they going to connect with kids every day virtually? but also not only our staff, but what are those expectations for students? And even our families have said, help us help our kids in those situations. And so again, all of the details will be available on the website and you'll be able to check those out as we move through those, those tiers. School operations is huge. Uh, when you think about everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis um, in our schools, Everything from breakfast procedures to staff meetings to how do we move kids from one place to the other. Our school operations tenant team has thought through it. It is the longest tenant by far. Uh, again, you have access to all of that on our website. But for example, one of the things that we'll do, we know that those drinking fountains are high touch points and we want it to be secure for kids. So uh, one of the things that we're doing this year is we are providing a water bottle, a Creek Public Schools water bottle for all students and staff uh, and we are installing additional water bottle fillers in our buildings uh, and shutting off the actual drinking fountain. So students will have access to that. They'll have a water bottle and you don't even have to worry about washing it. We'll collect it. We're gonna wash them uh, and make sure they're clean and sanitary and make sure every kid gets the correct water bottle back. Again, trying to create the safest environment for uh, our students and staff. Another one that I'll highlight on there, uh, if we have to move through those tiers, through green, yellow, and orange, Think about parent-teacher conferences and uh, be ready for some adjustments there. Of course, our teachers wanna see you face-to-face -face as well, uh, but if we move into those high-risk mitigation strategies at orange or red, uh, perhaps a virtual environment is better. Our student staff and family wellness team uh, has really thought through everything uh, as well. So how are we making sure students are socially and emotionally well? So everything from how are we checking in with them on a daily basis to are there, are there self screeners they can be doing and group activities that we can be doing to uh, support and provide those social and emotional supports. We're doing the same thing with staff. Uh, again, we know that a healthy, a healthy staff socially and emotionally uh, is only gonna do a better job with our kids. And so we have great things in place for them. Uh, they have awesome access to an employee assistance program. And we're also looking at how do we help all staff deal with stress and anxiety? Uh, we know that our staff have a lot on their plates and that as we embark on this new normal, uh, that that stress and anxiety uh, is certainly going to be heightened a little bit. And then we're thinking about you as well. How are we communicating our family supports to you? How are we making sure that we are helping you connect to all of the local resources that are available right here in our community? And if needed, uh, thinking about those family support meetings. If, if we can do those face-to-face, -face, certainly, but there's no reason that we can't uh, schedule some of those uh, family support meetings virtually as well. There have been a number of questions around technology and um, you've heard me say it once, but when we had to close our doors on March 19th uh, and go and transition to that whole e-learning idea, um, we reacted. 
Um, I found out the same time you did. In fact, I found out on Twitter uh, that the governor was asking us to do that. Uh, while I think we had a great plan in place, it was still a reaction. But since that time, we've been planning. And so I know that our plan is going to be better than our reaction. And so we're looking at devices. And one thing that we've heard from our families, it was really difficult uh, for those families if you had to share a device. So one thing that we've, we're already implementing for next year, all students kindergarten through 12th grade uh, will have access to a Chromebook. That's nothing new for third through third through 12th grade, uh, but we are in the process of securing Chromebooks for our kindergartners, first graders, second graders, uh, just in case we have to move into that e-learning situation again. They're gonna have access to it, but it's also a great resource to have for our teachers in the classroom. We also wanna make sure that our teachers have the most up-to-date technology. Uh, so within the next 30 to 60 days, we're gonna be rolling out uh, that uh, district-wide technology plan uh, for our staff as well. We're fortunate enough to have a great IT team here as well. And so we have a help desk and that help desk just isn't for our staff, it's also for you, um, our students and our families. So if you're at home working on e-learning and you're having an issue, uh, you can simply email support at creteschools.org and our IT team can help you out if we're in that situation. And again, as a community, you've, you've afforded us the opportunity to uh, provide this great technology for our staff. We wanna make sure they're maximizing that. So again, we're providing some just awesome professional development for our staff now, and we'll continue to do that uh, throughout the school year. Transportation, uh, we, run 10, we run 10 transportation routes every day, uh, plus all of our activity transportation, our special education transportation. And so we've spent a lot of time thinking about uh, how to do this safely. Uh, especially when you think about a bus, uh, we, have, we have a couple 72 passenger buses. Uh, that's a lot of students in one spot. And so our transportation team has done a great job of thinking through that. So the first thing uh, that every family will be receiving is some things to help you think through that student self-screening. Self so before I get on the bus, families, we're encouraging you uh, to take those temperatures, your students' temperatures at home. If they have a fever of, of 100 or greater, uh, we're gonna ask you to keep them at home. That's not a new practice. That 100 degree temperature point has always been the practice for us here at Cree Public Schools. But then also some of those other self-screening um, things that you can do. Do you have that dry cough? Is there some fatigue? Uh, and if you ever have questions about that, uh, you can certainly reach out to um, our awesome school nurses and they can help you with that. Students will hand sanitize before they get on the bus and after they get on the bus. Uh, depending on what tier, we'll, we'll practice physical distancing. And when we move into those high risk um, stages like orange, um, there's no doubt we need to be prepared for uh, reduced capacity on our buses. And so one of the ways you can help us do that as families is if you can transport your students to school, uh, that would be awesome if you could do that. Again, it helps us uh, with some of that physical distancing, uh, but we also understand that the transportation we provide is critical uh, and we're, we're planning to continue to do that for uh, all of our families. Um, one thing that you'll notice on here, and we'll, we'll address face coverings individually here in a little bit, um, but as long as we're on a school-provided transportation, uh, face coverings will be required at all levels. That includes our driver as well as our students. So let's dive into that. So when we, when we think about screening and health services, uh, the questions that come up all of the time are around those temperature checks and face coverings. You've heard me say it a couple times already, I truly believe we have a great plan to safely open our schools given our current situation. Again, we're a month away from school starting um, and that situation could look totally different 30 days from now. But as of today, I, I truly believe with the work that our teams have done, we have a great safe plan for our kids and our staff. What I wanna make sure we do is we implement that plan is that we're thinking long-term. I wanna keep our schools open. I want your kids to be with our teachers every day. And the research that we've done um, is pushing us towards the direction of really exploring those face coverings. So a couple of graphics to help you think through that, and this has really guided some of our thinking. So we know that if we want to decrease that transmission probability uh, to that very low stage, face coverings are critical. Uh, a visual on the right shows the difference between wearing a face covering and not. 
We've also collected some data on this, so to help guide our decisions. Again, we want to we want to make our decisions based on data, yet be practical and logical about it. So we asked our staff, and we had 96 responses. Uh, if there is a requirement to wear a mask, are there any reasons why you cannot wear one during the day? And you can see that almost 96% of our staff said, "Yep, um, not a problem. We'll do that because we want to see our kids and we want it to be safe." Those of you that took that that's a uh, parent survey, we also asked you a similar question. And I understand that's very small on your screen, but I wanna highlight the green. The green is, is the smallest fraction there, and that, was the, that really highlights the idea that a majority of our families are saying that face coverings are gonna help us get kids to school safely and keep our doors open, keep school open with kids physically in them, uh, that, that we're willing to explore that day, idea. So that brings up the whole question, are face coverings going to be recommended or are they going to be required? Again, we've reached heavily on our, our uh, relied heavily on our medical community to help us think through that. Uh, yes, we've looked at the national research. Uh, we've looked at what the CDC says, but again, we wanted to, we wanted to know locally right here in Nebraska, uh, what are physicians and medical professionals saying? And we actually have letters of support from each of these organizations saying they fully support face coverings in schools for a safe opening, as well as keeping our doors open and kids physically in our schools. We've worked very closely with Public Health Solutions and we have two scenarios here uh, that I wanna highlight. And if you look at the top piece of this, uh, in that red, yellow, and orange, I want you to notice that it says all students, all students, and not until orange, Still says all students, but that's when we need to get ready for some different scenarios. Uh, and I mean different scenarios in terms of bus, ca bus capacity. We'll have to seriously consider reducing, uh, in particular, in-town busing when we get to orange. We may have to look at alternative schedules if we get to that orange state. And what I mean by alternative schedules is uh, maybe it's a rotation that uh, today's an A day and, I, and I'm physically in school, and on a B day I'm e-learning. Again. I can't tell you exactly what those hybrid scenarios are going to look like because it's, it's going to totally depend on our current situation and what building it's happening on and in particular or what bus route it's happening on. But I also want you to notice the bottom, the, the bottom scenario, and that's without universal face coverings at tier two and tier three. So with that yellow and orange. And notice at green, we're still all students but without those universal face coverings, we're gonna to have to immediately start to look at um, reduced campus attendance and those bus capacities. Again, those hybrid scenarios. So here's, what, here's our plan uh, in terms of face coverings. Um, at tier one, and that's the green, so low community spread, know that we're gonna have the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment for our nurses. Um, face coverings will be optional at green. Uh, for students. We're going to highly encourage staff to wear them there. Of course, students would be encouraged to wear them at, at green as well. We are going to, to so screen temperatures of all students and staff at green. And here's our thinking behind that. If we're, in, if we're fortunate enough to be in green, we want to stay in green as long as possible. So if we can quickly screen kids for temperatures, then we're gonna make sure that we do that, again, with the idea of staying in green. Again, we're gonna ask that students self-monitor at home, that as families, uh, you're taking those temperatures and you're looking for those other COVID symptoms. When we get to tier two and three, so that would be the moderate to high community spread, face coverings will be expected and required for right now all kindergarten through 12th grade students and staff with, no, with the noted exceptions. And I'll talk about those exceptions in a minute. Face coverings will be optional for our PK students. This is, a, this is an ever evolving situation. It is fluid. Research came out early last week around the idea that uh, face coverings for preschool and kindergarten students may not have the impact that they believe it will have for other grade levels. So we're continuing to explore that. So right now, optional for PK at yellow and orange, required for kindergarten through 12th. Of course, we'll explore other options if we have to. Uh, so if a face shield would be more appropriate for a student, uh, especially with specialized needs and circumstances. So 
uh, students who might receive speech language services or might be deaf or, or hard of hearing, uh, perhaps a, a clear shield or a clear mask might be a better uh, solution. Now, one thing I wanna make sure uh, that we walk away from tonight, when we think about face coverings, um, I don't want you to get the idea that you're going to send your student to school and for seven and a half hours, they're gonna be locked with that face covering on. So there are some, there are some exceptions that, that are, we have considered at this point. We understand that there will be a certain group of students who will not be able to wear a face covering. And if, when you see our tier um, with the definitions in them, it's on our website. It was at the beginning of the presentation. Um, we're, we're really focusing on those students that have a 504 plan that would prohibit them from uh, wearing a face covering or an IEP. Anytime we can maintain six feet uh, of social distancing while indoors, those face coverings can come off. That's for our students and our staff. Of course, while they're eating lunch. And that's why we've taken all of those ideas and precautions to maintain some social distancing while we're at lunch. If we have a student uh, or a staff who's working one-on-one -on -one privately in an office, a classroom, uh, of course they could take their face covering off then. Uh, PE class, right? Really hard to, to physically work out with a mask on, so not appropriate there. Outside, um, anytime we can provide a sufficient physical barrier, maybe I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a student and I can, I can be separated with a piece of plexiglass. Um, and then certain instructional sequences, right? If we can spread out, um, and we might be doing a certain literature or reading activity for 15 minutes and we're spread out, we might say, hey, you know what, face coverings can come off. The other thing that we're working really hard on is we want our teachers to have flexibility to create opportunities for mask reprieve, right? Teachers know their kids. Uh, and when it comes time for a break, we want teachers to have the flexibility to say, all right, uh, we're headed outside, we're gonna spread out. Maybe it's an opportunity where they can have uh, class outside and really maintain some social distancing and get those face coverings off. So as we work through this, we wanna share uh, the beliefs that have developed because of it. Um, again, I've shared already that we're still about 30 days away from opening, and this is our plan as of today. And we truly believe there's no such thing as a perfect plan. Uh, again, as we think back about how we set the stage beforehand, that um, People are coming with different beliefs and, and different backgrounds and how this has impacted them in different ways. Uh, and, and we wanna be accommodating and empathetic to all of those. As a staff, I want you uh, to know that we, need, we know we need to continue to balance safety and practicality in our decision-making. And we need to be open and honest and transparent with you. And that's the reason for the Friday updates on why we've made certain decisions. Um, we're asking you as well as us that we all need to be humble and willing to adapt if when plans don't work as they intended. Some of these plans are great on paper uh, and we believe that they're gonna work great for our kids and our staff. But until we actually implement them and we practice them, uh, we might have to make some dis, uh, adaptations after that. Uh, we need to accept that these things are going to change and that we'll be flexible. Uh, safety is our utmost concern. It's about a safe return to school for you and our staff. And again, as I mentioned, we want to be empathetic and understanding to all uh, that may disagree with the decisions that we have made or that we will make. And again, we always encourage your input and your feedback. Uh, you, can, uh, you can certainly email me at any time. On our website, there's also an opportunity to connect with Dr. McDowell. Um, again, we welcome your feedback. That concludes the overall presentation. Uh, Again, I wanna apologize for the late start, um, some technical difficulties. We're gonna get that hammered out so that we can connect with you um, where you're at, especially on Facebook. Um, but now uh, we've been collecting those questions. Again, I wanna make sure and note that we're not gonna be able to get to all of your questions tonight. Um, so those that we don't get to, uh, we're creating a frequently asked questions document that will be available on our website and we'll encourage you to go check out those answers there. So um, the first question, and as you see me look up, I'm looking at a, uh, the first question that's up there. For families that do not have computers at home, if we go on a digital distance learning, will computers be loaned out? Absolutely. Again, we are putting that plan in place uh, so every student, kindergarten through 12th grade, will have their own Chromebook, and they'll be able to uh, just take that Chromebook home with them. 
So let's think about a situation where we might be in green or yellow and we're, we are fully in school, in person, and unfortunately, um, your student might test po positive for COVID and they know that they're gonna have to be home uh, quarantining for 10 to 14 days. Well, they're gonna have their own Chromebook that they can just take with them and have access to that e-learning opportunity. Uh, the next question, on August 12, 2020, does, does that date include special education students returning that day? It does if they, are, if they are making that transition. So if they are a kindergartner, third grader, sixth grader, or ninth grader, they will also attend that day. Great clarifying question here. If I understood correctly, just because public health solutions dial changes doesn't mean the school dial changes. What is the difference between your dial and the public health solutions dial? Public health solutions dial is, is a guide for us. Um, again, as, as we collect data and maybe we're not seeing an outbreak or any type of case increase uh, in our buildings and we feel like our, our practices and procedures are working really well, we can make that decision to stay in yellow. The other thing that's really flexible about our plan, I apologize for not uh, maybe making this clear, we have 12 tenants and each of those tenants could be in a different color depending on our situation. And so again, this plan offers that flexibility. Public Health Solutions has been a great partner for us and, and we will certainly continue to collaborate and, and, and lean on them for guidance and support. Um, but even they would tell you that they can't dictate uh, what we do here at Creek Public Schools. With the absenteeism expected, if when the students are out, will they be penalized? Uh, they will not be penalized as long as they are attending. Let, let's think, let me, let me explain that a little bit. So if I'm required to quarantine as a student and I'm at home and I have my, corn, uh, my Chromebook and I'm able to connect and participate in that e-learning, whether I'm participating live with my class or I'm participating in what we call asynchronous, meaning that my teacher might not be there, but I'm still online doing uh, and learning uh, and submitting those assignments, you'd be counted as present. And so, uh, no, you will not be penalized um, in that situation. Next, next question, if a student staff member tests positive, what will be the mandate before they return to school? Uh, if we know that a student or staff member has a positive test, Again, that is that, that is that partnership with Public Health Solutions. Um, it has been a 14-day quarantine, um, symptom-free, uh, but again, as, as we all continue to learn more, um, that could adapt. Anytime that that happens, um, again, great partnership with Public Health, um, but we'll also be sending some literature home uh, to those individuals, again, staff and students, outlining everything that would have to take place in order for those students or staff to return. Um, staff question, awesome. Will staff receive extended paid sick leave assuming they will not be allowed to return for several days or weeks um, given, a, given a COVID situation? So our staff um, fall under, uh, have, a, have an additional 14 days if it is a COVID related illness uh, and there's some guidelines around that, that that were provided in the Families First Coronavirus Act. And so, again, we'll follow those procedures. Um, 14 days is allowed for, for staff. Again, if they test positive or if they are asked to quarantine um, by a medical professional. And then I believe there are two other instances when they have access to those 14 days. Um, so, yeah, those 14 days would be in addition to uh, the sick leave and the personal leave that they already have paid. Yeah, it's a great question. Why would you wait until it is yellow or orange before requiring masks, if requiring masks from the beginning could prevent the spread in the first place? I think that's a great question. And it's something that we have grappled with. And again, uh, when we look at green, we're really looking at there is there are low incidences um, in our immediate community. And that risk dial, that public health solutions, and I'm not an expert on that, but there are seven different criteria that they use um, seven different data points um, that they use to determine where that risk dial is. Again, a guide for us. And so 
if we're, we believe if we're monitoring for temperature and those other um, COVID related symptoms, uh, that while masks would be uh, encouraged, not required at green. So two questions that came in here together, and they're the same questions. Um, if a family decides that they do not feel comfortable sending their children back, would they be allowed to participate in distance learning? So right now, um, we do not have a distance learning option just as an option. So we are preparing our, our teachers and our staff to um, package what they do um, every day um, to meet those various needs uh, of, of those extended absentee learners. What we're so fortunate for here in Cree Public Schools is that uh, if you saw that data at the beginning, our staff want to come back and can come back. And so that doesn't leave us a lot of choice for our teaching staff to be able to teach uh, full remote classes. Uh, if we did that, if we pulled teachers um, out of their classrooms to teach e-learning and e-learning only, well, now we, now we run into the situation where we have to take that class and split it up amongst maybe five or six other teachers and we're really increasing that class size, which limits that social distancing. So at this time, there is not a, an option for virtual learning. Um, we believe that if we're in session, uh, we can do that in a very safe manner uh, for our students and our staff. Uh, will you have CCLC after school? Yes, we will. Um, I'll, I'm going to say uh, when you head to our website uh, under COVID-19 and you look at school operations, we have CCLC clearly outlined of when it will be in session and when not, and all of the protocols uh, to keep kids and staff safe in that environment as well. I love this question. If a student is, if a student uh, is home due to a fever, will they need to have a doctor's note to come back to school? No, we're gonna follow our same uh, fever procedure. So um, if a student is sent home with a fever, uh, and again, 100 degrees has been our, our temperature mark and we're gonna keep it right there. And so uh, if a student is fever free uh, with no other COVID symptoms for that 24 hour period, uh, they're gonna be able to come back. Uh, however, if a student, and that has to be uh, without the assistance of any type of fever reducer, um, but if a student has a fever for 24 or 48 hours, uh, we're going we're gonna to ask that you continue to monitor for those. And then if they're fever free for 72 hours, at that point, they'll be able to come back. Oh, fantastic question. I should have had this in the presentation. Love the feedback. Who will be providing masks or shields for students, parents or the school? Uh, who is responsible for care of those masks if they are reusable? And how will we assure one student keeps their mask always? So as a, as a family, you're going to have the choice if you want to send your student to school with a, what we're calling a school appropriate mask. It has to, you would have to follow the same guidelines uh, as our dress code. So it has to be school appropriate in terms of if anything was printed on it or whatever, it's, whatever it depicts. But if you don't want to send your student to school with a mask, Cree Public Schools will be uh, providing a a disposable mask every day for every kid. So uh, we're taking that on. Um, and because of those very questions that you asked um, about who's gonna be responsible for washing it and making sure they get their same one back, that's why we've decided to go to the disposable route. So uh, we will provide a mask every day for every kid if they need it. But again, uh, as a family, if your student has a cloth mask that's really comfortable and they want to wear, the, they want to bring that one. Awesome. Do that. Um, if one child of a family tests positive, uh, they will test the rest of the family. Have to, does the rest of the family also have to quarantine? Um, I, I'm going to say that's a great question for public health solutions. Um, they're not on our call tonight, but that's where contact tracing comes in. And they'll have some recommendations and, for, and some guidance around that. And the last question that's up here right now that I can see, um, as of today, green or yellow? As of today, I don't know. 
Um, we are still, uh, we're gonna wait for Public Health Solutions to uh, post their dial so that we can get a good feel for where we're at as a community. Um, of course, um, I really hope that we are in that, that green or yellow so that we can uh, truly open on August 12th. As the, again, that is our plan. Um, every student in person in our buildings uh, with our staff. All right. Um, that is the last question that I can see on the docket. There, there may certainly be more. Again, I'm going to direct you to our website uh, for that FAQ. Be looking for that in the next couple of days. Uh, the rest of the plan uh, will be out there shortly. So if you want to go dive deep into each of those tenants and, and see what's in store uh, for green, yellow, and orange uh, at all levels, uh, again, red uh, primarily being e-learning, again, head to our website, www.creteschools.com, and it's right there on the homepage. Again, uh, I want to say um, my sincerest apologies for the delay. Uh, we'll continue to get better uh, with that technology and how we, how we connect and engage with you. Uh, we had great participation tonight, so thank you to those of you that hung in there. This, is, this has been recorded, so uh, we'll post it uh, to our YouTube channel and we'll get that link out there. So if you wanna come back and watch it, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for your support, thanks for your understanding as we navigate this unprecedented time and push out our plan. Be on the lookout for more updates. Again, we have to remember today is July 15th, August 12th is about a month away and we have to be ready to pivot at a moment's notice. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe and please reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a great evening.